Bobby chooses Retti's opening, which was a big favorite of his in his early years. As you know, he came to play exclusively Pawn to King 4, but in those early days, he was very frequently playing the King's Indian attack. We have G6, the King's side Fianchetto variation, and so E4 now is going to transpose to Robach's defense. Now, Karl Robach was an Austrian player, a very good player who was the gold medalist in the 1960 Chess Olympiad, edging out even the reigning world champion of the time, Michael Tell. D6 by Shalomson, Knight C3, the two knights variation. Now Knight F6 transposes, as Rodkov could tell you, to the classical variation of Vasya Pirtz's defense. Bishop c4, kingside castles, bobby castles, and we have c6 right here. Now, here the most common move is e5. a4 is also commonly played. Bishop b3, third in popularity, might be the best choice of all. But bobby played queen e2, the bot calling for bishop b3. Shalomson with queen's knight d7. D5 being the most frequently played move. Bot calling for B5. Most frequent is D5, then Bishop B3, and Bishop G4. The bot's move of B5 is also among the top moves in popularity. That line is B5, Bishop D3, and then this knight comes to A6. The bot preferring Bishop G4 there as well. Shalomson playing queen's knight d7, now e5, and knight d5. Pawn takes pawn seems optimal. And then after pawn takes pawn, then knight d5. Yes. Knight d5 by Shalomson. Bishop takes the knight. Pawn takes the bishop. And pawn takes the pawn on d6. Do not play knight takes the pawn here. If you knight takes the pawn, then d takes e5, and this becomes a little vulnerable here, doesn't it? You could try rook d1, but after pawn e6 hitting the knight, this knight has to retreat to c3, and then you have e takes d4. Now, you can knight takes d4 here. And okay, the eval bar says you're at least equal. But in this line, you're slightly better than equal. So e takes the d6, now knight takes the d5, and queen a5. Now rook e8 is actually the necessary move here. Push this queen out of the e-file. You could try queen b5. You get a star for that. And maybe a6, maybe h6. You know, the problem for black here is this poor bishop, isn't it? Queen a5 was chosen by Shalomson, and that was answered by pawn c4 defending the knight. I would think knight e7 check is also viable. What do I get for knight e7 check? Ah, it says it's inaccurate. I thought that, and then bring out your bishop. Well, the eval bar, you know, look what it says. It's giving me better than plus one. Let's go back. All right, so anyway, queen a5 c4 defends knight f6 bishop d2 hitting the queen queen back to d8 now knight e7 check is played king h8 and knight takes the bishop rook takes the knight putting some pressure here it is defended you hate your queen to be a defender of a pawn so b3 now that does weaken this diagonal so you have to be on your toes queen d7 queen d3 on h6, king's rook to e1, taking the open file, now g5. And yeah, I, I like rook f e8 here. On principle, you want to contest the open file. Don't leave your opponent in sole control of an open file. So it makes sense to contest that file and get your fair share of the open e file. And white could play a number of moves here. I mean, Expand on the queen side, I think, is what I would play. I get a check mark. But as far as black is concerned, he can now re-centralize his king, get back toward the center. Anyway, g5, 
is what Shalomson played. Bobby with D5. This is very interesting. Bobby inviting an attack on his rook. So, right, I would play knight G4 here, wouldn't you? If I were in black's shoes, what would you guys play? Shalomson moved his knight, but not to G4. I prefer G4. Shalomson picked H5 and gets an... an oh, B5? Hmm. The bot prefers B5. What does it think about my move? I get a lousy check mark. Well, a check mark is still satisfactory. As long as we're in the green. So thumbs up, check marks, stars, etc. We're happy with. I would not have thought of B5. That's quite an interesting move. Well, I would have to play Rook AC1, wouldn't I? Yeah. And if pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. Yeah. Okay. Back, back, back. Knight H5 by Shalomson. Queen's Rook to D1. Rook to g8. Yeah, again, I like contesting the open file myself. Hmm. I'm told that I'm inaccurate. I thought that would be a better choice. Okay, and, and if, if knight d4, I'll take the knight with my bishop. I get a star. And of course, queen takes, and then king can move to h7 or g8. Well, you know what? Uh, look at that eval bar. Strongly favoring white. So rook to g8 was tried. Knight d4 anyway, and queen g4 gets the inaccuracy. Bishop e5 being recommended. Again, I, I am really concerned about this file. I'd be very tempted myself to play, okay, if not the king's rook, use the queen's rook, and see what you can see. I get a thumbs up for my choice. I gather h4 would be played here. Star, star. Right. And then queen f5 for Kasaurus, forcing the queen trade. And then a fork with super attack. Back, 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 back. Queen g4 was played. Knight f5. You know, the, the eval bar shows white just clearly winning from this point. Although to the beginner, it might not be so clear. After all, white's materially only up one pawn. But look at how active white's pieces are compared to black's. Knight f4, bishop takes the knight. And black is probably a little bit excited here to have this file opening. He may not even realize how bad he's got it. Well, one problem is this fork that can be played. But that's not what Bobby's really interested in. Because knight e7 can be answered by the bishop to e5, kind of locking everything up, right? So knight e7, bishop here. If you take this because now this battery, but white should still be better here even so. Even at that. I mean, my queen can come to f1 to defend. It's, it's just making it a little bit harder for myself. But knight takes d6. Bobby says, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in making a passed pawn here. That pawn is vulnerable. And this pawn would love to move on up the board. Shalomson with bishop to f6. Knight takes the pawn with check. And suddenly white's advantage is much more clear than it was a few moves ago. King g7, unfortunate interruption of this battery. Knight to e5, hitting the queen. Bishop takes the knight. Rook takes the bishop. King back to h8. Reintroducing this checkmate threat. But that is defused with g3. Pawn takes the pawn. H pawn takes the pawn. And now this rook comes over to f8. But after rook e7, black resigned. There's a checkmate threat right there. And not a real strong way to refute. Black resigned here. The only move you could try perhaps here would be rook g7. But here I believe I'm just capturing that. And my extra pawns will win the day here for sure. As soon as I can. Any moment now. In fact, I could just force a queen trade right here, couldn't I? Just to simplify. The eval bar comes down, but it does force a queen trade. 
And one thing I'm about and one thing that Bobby was about was simplifying when you're ahead. That is one thing I definitely learned from Fisher. And, you know, you've got one, two, three extra pawns. Two of them are passed pawns. One of them is a protected passed pawn. 